you know, that's the thing right now that you need to have going into camp is having the right mindset. So that's gonna be that's gonna be what I'm gonna you know try to focus on for uh, for the day, the day before, and you know get ready uh, any any other way that I can. Just uh, get get in your head. The summer's over, and now you're getting back to work. Um, get in the hockey mode again because uh, you haven't been in it for a couple months. Um, you gotta get kind of in your head. Uh, you know how you're gonna play. You gotta you know visualize certain things. And uh, like I said, everything is just hockey right now. You can't worry about um, you know anything that goes out around you other than what you gotta do on the ice. For me, I just visualize you know things that that I do well and uh, things I need to do. Um, you know, visualizing and I was like. Sometimes dreaming at the same time, you know what what to do on the ice is something that I like to I like to do, and I think that gets me ready for for going out there and performing. Uh, you have to come and perform every day. Uh, you have to you know try 100% all the time. I don't know. I want to show them that uh, you know, I can play. I just want to make sure that I can improve on everything and make sure that they know I can play at this level. Puck bounces towards the blue line. Erickson. McGilney. To McKay. McGilney scores! And Brad Borgstrom gets the ball off the far side, number 38. He gives you an idea why he was the leading scorer with the Erie Otters. Pat Quinn talked about Brad Boys in training camp three years ago that the puck intrinsically ends up on a stick. He is always in the place where the puck is going to end up being, such as the case usually with these great goal scorers and the one-timers Joe alluded to from the lower part of the circle. Six assists to lead all uh, comers in terms of assists in training camp and the inter-squad games. Brad Boyce, uh, six assists so far in camp and then a big one tonight. A little bit of a stamp early on in this camp for you as you sort of put your name and face together here. Yeah, hopefully, you know, um, we can come in here and play well. Hopefully I get going. You know, tonight playing with some great players, so that made it a lot easier. But, uh, you know, it was a fun game today. It was good. It was an actual game. We'll get things going, and uh, hopefully we can see that in the preseason. This is supposed to happen to other people's children. It's, uh, it's something that's supposed to happen to the boy down the road or the girl down the road and uh, it's very exciting it's quite interesting but Brad's always been Brad in our family and uh, uh, yes it's uh, uh, he gets opportunities that the rest of us don't have and uh, he's been places and done things and been involved with people that are idols and the rest of us look up to and yet at the same time he's, he's Brad uh, he, he seems to be handling it fairly well right now, the attention, and uh, when I say handling it, uh, he, he uh, still is really important to, to have his friends and his family, and, and uh, his values seem to be really well in place still. I think if he doesn't make the Leafs, he'll be like everybody else who gets told that you're not on the team. Um, it's the same thing. Everybody wants to make the team. and. Uh, and he will be disappointed. He's been disappointed in the past, but he also understands that uh, there's a standard and you have to work hard to, to reach that standard. And his time hopefully will come. Uh, if people uh, tell him he's not able to be on the Leafs this year, then hopefully they'll be able to tell him what he needs to work on and give him some opportunities and help him support him so that he can work on those things and, and try and get better. And I think so far he's been improving each year and he, he listens very carefully to what the coaches and trainers tell him and he works on those things and seems to be getting better at it so if they tell him something this year then I'm pretty sure he'll listen and he'll work on that as well. I was always growing up you know I um, wanted to but I almost had to be a Leaf fan because my dad was always a big Leaf fan. Gilmore, um, Borshevsky, you like these guys because you know their names. You know when you're younger, they had a good name like Dan Daoust and uh, you know guys like that. You know Borshevsky always had the big goalie score, so now we're all Borshevsky fans. Um, but definitely Gilmore, um, and even Wendell Clark. You know he's he was he had everything amazing to watch. But uh, to to put on a Leaf jersey, you know, it was awesome. And to play your first game to walk in there on the ice of the Arcana Center. 
that was, you know, that was definitely a thrill of a lifetime, I think. I think when you put that on, you have a lot, you know, there's those extra little tingles where as opposed to put any other jersey on because of that, because of growing up in Toronto and following them when you're younger and knowing the history in there, just like the, just like the red leaf, you put it on and you know who's worn it before you and that, that makes it that much more exciting to wear it and that much more, you know, honoring to have it on. I think one of the biggest things is having the experience of going to the past two camps, knowing what to expect going into it. I think having that, you know, that extra year to grow and to get bigger, stronger, um, especially last year knowing how to win. Uh, you know, past two years, we, you know, the year before that, you know, we finished first overall in the regular season and, uh, you know, we lose 12 games, you know, that especially, and then carrying it over to last year to know how to win. Um, you know, hopefully that'll, that'll help me uh, coming up. I think uh, one of the biggest differences is, is doing the little things. When, when you're in the lead, it's the little things you need to do, get it deep, um, not to turn the puck over the blue line, uh, make sure you get out of your end, blocking the shot. Those things, I think, are the difference of knowing how to win, knowing how to lose. Uh, you know, a lot of guys, you know, are great players, but you know, they've never really won anything. And uh, you know, for whatever reason, I think those are you know just those little things, those little intangibles that you need. I think a lot of it comes down from your coaching. You know, I think if your coach knows how to win, he can feed that into the players, and then the players, you know, f spread that out amongst themselves. And that's I think it comes from your coach teaching you how to win. And then when you pick up from your coach, you eventually learn how to win. Every time you go and talk to somebody, it's the coaches, they always say, do the simple things. You know, sometimes you're, you're overhandling the puck or you're doing too much and it's not working for you. So, you know, go back to the basics, you know, dump the puck in, don't handle as much, things like that. That'll, that'll get you back on track when you start getting the feeling of it. Sometimes it's, you know, it, you know for some reason everyone gets in slumps at different times. And, uh, you know, if you get in a slump, um, you know, it just happens, and uh, to get out of it, that's, that's the thing the coaches say, is just don't worry about it. Um, you know, try to relax a little more, things like that. So, you know, going in, I'm nervous, but, um, you know, it's going to come. I know it's going to come. I'm excited for it. And, uh, you know, we'll get a couple skates in here and there, and then, uh, then when it comes, you know, I'll be ready.